Blasting in this area, Major. Using dynamite? Yes, sir. You familiar with it? Moderately. I know it's tricky compared with gunpowder. What's the project? The irrigation ditch. We got water on the other side. We aim to bring it down into the valley. Bless it, Sergeant. Sir. You'd be using that defile. First charge at the top, second near the bottom should do it. Yes, sir. Just about a minute in between. You a demolition man? Hardly. Excuse me, sir. But would you be, by any chance, Major Jonathan Elliott? I am. <laughs> Could I... What, would it be okay if we shook hands, sir? I'm mighty proud to know you. Excuse me, sir. Morning, ladies. Sorry, I got to stop. They've been blown to bits. Hold him, Major. Stop! He'll never make it. I'm betting he will. Hang on, Ordra! I think that's the best-looking woman I've seen you with in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, I'll have to fix up the glass bedroom. Thank uh, you. But first, Madame is going to try the latest thing in Barclay buggies, right this way. Oh. Guaranteed to stop and turn down any kind of person. <laughs> and I have some new magazines for you to read. Oh, thank you. Well, you all keep this up. I may decide never to get well. If I know you, you'll be tearing up and down those stairs under your own steam within two weeks. Oh, I certainly hope so. I know I'm very grateful to Major Elliot. Oh, I hope someone thought of inviting him for dinner. I did. As a matter of fact, he should be here any minute. Good. Oh, that must be him now. Audrey, your nose is shiny. Is it? Uh, no, no, on second thought, I think it's your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Silas. Uh, come in, Major. Thank you. I hope I'm not late. No, sir, you're right on time and mighty welcome. Right. Hello, Major. Jared. Howdy. Hello, Nick. Major. Good to see you again, Mrs. Barkley. Miss Andra, you both look just fine. Please, sit down. Thank you. Major, you have no idea how nice it is to see you. Only, 
How does one thank a man for doing what you did? By not mentioning it again, please. Uh, seeing you, all of you, is ample payment. Well, it's nice seeing you again, Major. And if you'll excuse me, I have a few things to tend to. Of course. Audra, why don't you pour the Major a cup of coffee? What's your assignment going to be here? Locating five acres of suitable land within an easy riding distance of Stockton for a supply depot, preferably near water. That sounds like the North 40 to me, and it's not very far from the river. Well, that's fine. I'll make that my first stop. And why don't you make our home your headquarters while you're here? There's plenty of room for you and your orderly. Oh, I wouldn't want to impose. It's no imposition at all, believe me, Major. And I could be your guide, if you'd like. Well, in that case, I accept. With your permission, of course, Mrs. Barclay. Permission granted, Major. And just how long are we going to be around here anyway, Major? Oh, it's hard to tell. Listen, I've got an idea. You're not really needed here. Why don't you go up to San Francisco and stay at the palace and enjoy yourself for a few days? It treats on me, of course. Well, thank you, now. But I don't think I will. Suit yourself. Where would we be going now? Not we, me. I'm going to look at that land. Alone? I'll have a guide. A guide? It wouldn't be the girl now, would it, Major? We won't discuss it. Come off it, Elliot. Why do you think I want to stay around here? That'll do, Sergeant. Major? Yes, sir, Major. I'll have the other horses settled in a moment, sir. Very good, Sergeant. Very good. Good morning, Miss Audrey. some view. Is it always like this? It's especially lovely this time of year. Where every prospect pleases, and only man is vile. A soldier who reads poetry? It has sustained me from time to time when everything else has failed. May we rest here for a moment? I've been reading Swinburne. Oh, yes. Are you familiar with his work? My favorite lines are from the Garden of Proserpine. Here where the world is quiet. No, another stanza. Which one? From too much love of living, from hope and fear set free, we thank with brief thanksgiving whatever gods may be, that no life lives forever, that dead men rise up never, that even the weariest river winds somewhere safe to see. Obviously, that's not your favorite stanza. No. It's too dark, too hopeless. And your world is full of hope. Full of bright and beautiful sunshine, isn't it? I like to think so. Does the Major have any further orders for me, sir? No, Sergeant. We'll be moving on now. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> More beef, Sergeant. No, thank you, ma'am. It's the finest meal I've ever had, but I'm all full up. Well, you figure the land in the North Pasture is what you're interested in, eh? Well, it's the best I've seen so far, but I'd like to scout around some more, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, Ed Masters wants to know if he can come out and do an interview on you for our local newspaper. Only if I can't avoid it. That's one of the prices of fame, I'm afraid, Major. And a waste of time. I gave an interview several months ago in St. Louis. The reporter wanted to know all the gory details of old battles, while I wanted to talk about the things that concern me today. Uh, the interview was a fiasco, of course. What are the things that concern you, Major? I'm sure we'd all be interested. Our cities have become cesspools of ice, and the corruption is spreading throughout the entire land. Well, now, do you uh, really feel that way, Major? Yes, and it's one battle I'd be eager to fight. I, I, I've told the Major he should run for public office. That'll do, Sergeant. 
Oh, uh, try our wine. It's from our own vineyard. Thank you. Uh, begging the Major's pardon. No wine for you, sir. Surely just a half a glass, Sergeant. Oh, no, sir. The regimental surgeon gave me strict instructions. Uh, alcohol for medicinal purposes only, and only in an emergency. McQuaid is my faithful watchdog. And he's right, of course. My old wounds sometimes prohibit my simple pleasures. Uh, do you want to hang? Because I can arrange it any time you like, Major, and you know it. So here are your orders, Major. Number one, you stay away from the Barclay girl. Don't dirty her name by mentioning it. Oh, you're a real little leprechaun, aren't you, my love? Order number two, you stay away from the booze. Even you should know better by this time. Shut up. Oh, get out. Happens to be order number three. You stop your stalling, you finish your business, and you get out. Because if you don't, I may not be able to save your skin this time. Do you understand? So I'll say good night. And I'll be seeing you in the morning, Major. You. I'm gonna get me a gun and I'm gonna get you. You're gonna go sleep it off. Now get out of here, Crowley, and don't come back. I'll get you. I'm gonna get me a gun. I'll be back. It's getting late, and we're getting ready to close up. So if you don't mind, sir. Major Elliot. We've met? Well, not exactly, but I was with the seventh at Dollar Creek. Oh. If you want a drink, it's on the house, Major. Well, thank you, but you buy yourself a drink and bring me a bottle, please. Yes, sir, Major. Hello, Major. They call me Cora around here. Good evening. And uh, getting on towards morning, I, I got me a room upstairs uh, out across the alley. If you'd like to do your drinking there. Get away from me. You heard him, Cora. Beat it. The best in the house. Pennsylvania rye whiskey. That'll be just fine. To the brave men of Dollar Creek. Yes, sir. Excellent. My compliments. Oh, my pleasure, Major. And we'll be open as long as you care to stay. Thank you. Yes, sir. expect you tonight, Major. I didn't figure you'd expect me, Meg. Meg? Oh. <gasps> it's me, Cora. Remember? You want me to play like I'm this, uh, Meg? Now, uh, what was she like? Mm -hmm. I know you, Meg. 
Did you think I'd ever forget? Major, I think you had a little bit too much to drink. I'm gonna make it all right. It's a little cold in here, Major. Would you shut the door? started out as a rear rank private. Do tell, Brian. Two months later, he was a sergeant. He was commissioned in the field, and he finished the war as a captain. Before he came here, he commanded a garrison at Tucson. Now, somehow I should have known that she would know all that. Is the uh, sergeant going along with you? I suppose so. Somehow I figured that. There's not too much the major can do without the sergeant. Sergeant McQuaid is his orderly. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Yeah. I'm sorry I overslept. It's something I rarely do. Oh, there's no need to apologize. I'm just glad you had a good night's rest. Actually, I didn't get to sleep till almost dawn. When I did, I slept like a child. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I've got to get out and prod those uh, hired hands. Now that he's up in San Francisco, it leaves all the work to me. There'll be no gallivanting around now, here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Major. Well, I'm afraid I have to be on my way, too. Mother, you are under strict orders to have a good day. Fine. You too, Major. Thank you, I'm sure I will. I envy you your family, Mrs. Barclay. My father died when I was a boy, and I never did have any brothers or sisters. And your mother? My mother. Oh, she's living in Mexico now. I suppose I did have a family of sorts when I was growing up. My mother kept a roof over our heads by running a lodging house. So there were always plenty of people around. Men from all over the world. That gave me an education. I suppose I didn't appreciate it at the time. Yes, my mother gave me quite a head start in life. Do you have pictures of her? No, but she was beautiful. She was the toast of the lodging house. I remember, people used to call her by her first name. And so did I when I was quite small. Folks used to think that was funny, and I guess it was. What was her name? Meg. Well, hello, Fred. Come on in. Morning, Jerry. What brings you out our way? I've got to see Major Elliott. Oh, what about? You remember a girl who worked at the Gold Eagle named Cora? Yeah. She was murdered last night. The bartender says that you were one of the last people to see Cora alive, Major. I was in town last night. How did she die? She was strangled. Whoever did it put his brand on her. His brand? What do you mean? The letter A was burned into her shoulder with a match or lit cigar. Wasn't there a book by Hawthorne, The Scarlet Letter, where the heroine was forced to wear the letter A? Why? She was accused of being an adulteress. That's it. Now, Major... Major, how did it happen you were at the Gold Eagle so early this morning? I couldn't sleep. You recall my exchange with McQuaid about the wine last night? Yes, I do. Well, I'm still carrying some Confederate lead around in me, and it's painful. When it hurts too much and I can't sleep, alcohol will usually do the trick. However, our regimental surgeon prefers that I abstain until times of real need. Last night was one of those times. Major, was there anyone else in the saloon? Just the bartender and the unfortunate girl when I arrived. The bartender was alone when I left. Jared, do you remember Judd Crowley? Judd Crowley? Yeah, he used to work for us about a year ago. Yeah, that's the one. He's been helping out over at Kane's stable recently. The bartender says that Judd was giving Cora fits about something or other most of the night. 
So bad he had to throw him out just about the time you arrived. Yes, I remember now. He was so drunk he could hardly stand on his feet. Did you hear him threaten anyone? He said he was going to get a gun and come back. Well, that checks. Now, uh, by any chance, did you happen to see him later? Well, as I recall, there's a stairway outside the building across the alley from the saloon. That's right. Go on. I have no idea where it leads. As I was leaving, I saw a man walking up those stairs. I remember because I wondered who else would be out that late. Was it Crowley? It was. Thank you, sir. It's true song all over again. Everything's exactly the same. We're all right. They don't suspect me. And I give you my oath it won't happen again. <gasps> Your oath? Don't make me laugh, Major. Yes, I'm rid of that feeling. I'm cleansed. Look in my eyes. It's out of my system. Until you get your hands on a jug again, you are a blooming maniac. I'm not. That's not true. I was a hero during the war. I risked my life time and time again. Look at some of these medals. The war's over, Major. And that won't wash out what you've done to these innocent girls. <laughs> innocent. They were filth, and the world's a better place without them. Oh, really? And just what did they ever do to you? They exist. That's no answer, Major. Sergeant. I'm going to tell you a story. What a surprise. I'm going to tell you about my mother. I'm not interested in your mother. My mother! Ran the most popular boarding house in the city, and it wasn't because of the quality of the rooms. Do you have any idea what it's like for a little boy to find that out about his mother? To hear? Dirty jokes to be pointed out with a wink and a smirk. Do you want to hear more? Where are you yes. going? You take it easy. Anything happens to me, and they open a letter that puts a rope around your neck? I don't think so. You could have turned me in after Tucson, but you didn't. Because you were a rear private with a bad record and no future. You wanted to climb aboard a gravy train, get a promotion, be my orderly, live my kind of life, share my money. That's not how it happened. You begged me. You told me that I'd be a fool to pass up such a chance. You tell that to a court and see where it gets you. All right. You win. But there's got to be no more killing. Oh, I told you there wouldn't be anyone else. Oh, it's over now. Over. I pray that it is, Major. Now, you just relax and enjoy your stay here. You may never have another opportunity to be at such a fine place. All right. But uh, doesn't the Major think that it's time for us to leave this place? The Major does not. The Major has plans. Audra Barkley, Sergeant. I've never met anyone like her before. With her, I feel it would change everything. Are you serious, man? Yes, I am. She will be my salvation. She's pure. I feel I can fully and finally cleanse myself with Well, we're off. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Just fine. Good. Major, why don't you join us? Where are you going? Well, it's just the Cattlemen Association meeting, but we usually cut that short and sweet and get into the most cutthroat poker game you've ever seen. Thank you, but I think I'll just stay here and keep the ladies company, if you don't mind. Well, all right. Jared, don't keep a kicker. Never. Where's Nick? Where's Jared? There's Nick. 
<laughs> and you, Nick, what? don't draw to an inside straight. Oh, no, not me. I learned not to do that from you. You who beat me out of $5, remember? Well, that's very pretty playing, miss. Very pretty. That's because you have no ear for music. You are absolutely right. Major? Nick, come on. Come on. Oh, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope you ladies don't mind. Not a bit. Well, now, Jared, you ready to lose the east wing of the Barkley Ranch? <laughs> Please don't stop. Not now. You've heard my entire repertoire. Besides, it's time for coffee. Mrs. Barkley. Hmm? I'm going to marry your daughter. I beg your pardon? I said I'm going to marry your daughter. I hope this pleases you. Major, I... Well, we all admire you very much, and we are very grateful to you for what you have done, but... Am I to understand that you're rejecting me? Oh, no, no, no. In the final analysis, Audra's wishes are all that important. But you barely know each other. Aren't you being a bit hasty? Hasty? Well, who knows how much life is left for you, for me, for anyone? Can't you see? What's the matter? <laughs> she is opposed to our marriage. Our marriage? Yes. I won't permit it. I respect your mother, Audra, but our future together is really all that matters. I'm sorry, but I don't love you. In fact, I barely know you. It takes time. Time? There is no time. I thought you were different, but perhaps not. Perhaps there's another man. Lots of men. I thought you were pure, but... With your permission, ladies, I shall remove my unwelcome presence. I've never seen him act like that. Oh, Audrey, he's a strange man. A very strange man. <laughs> Judd Crowley. Hmm? Oh, you mean as he confessed? No. No, as a matter of fact, he keeps hollering he didn't do it. What do you think, Fred? You know, it doesn't make any difference what I think, Jerry. It's up to the judge and the jury. I mean just between us. Well, yep. Yeah. All right. He's making a believer out of me, Jerry. If it wasn't for Major Elliott identifying him the way he did, I don't think I'd even be holding him. You mind if I have a little talk with him? No. Wish you would. Judge, you got a visitor. Call when you're through. Thanks, Judge. Hello, Judge. What do you want, Barkley? Just a little conversation. Come. Well, might be that I could help you. <laughs> the last help I got from a Barkley was a boot in the seat of my britches. That's because you were drunk, Judd. 
Mean, fighting drunk just once too often. Nick warned you about it, you didn't listen. Well, I've been doing this fine without the Barclays, thank you. Sure, sure you have. That's why you're lying here in jail, booked on suspicion of murder. I didn't do it. I suppose you tell me about it. Some people get all the breaks, that's all. I've been kicked around all my life. Did you go back to Cora's room after the saloon closed? No. Major Elliott said he saw you going up the stairs. The only thing I can figure, he just... Well, he must have seen somebody that looks a whole lot like me. Life must have been pretty poor, right, Jack? <laughs> well, that's the answer. That's the whole thing out there in a nutshell, ain't it? Judd, if it comes down to your word of the Majors, you realize whose word the jury's gonna take, don't you? Yeah. But I didn't kill that girl. I couldn't kill anybody. Least of all her. You were drunk. Yes, I was drunk. And I was talking mean. That's all it was, just a lot of talk. Judd, were you in Tucson, Arizona about a year ago? I never been in Tucson in my life. I was working for you a year ago, remember? Does the letter A mean anything to you? What are you talking about? I never learned how to read and write. Mr. Barkley, I'm gonna tell you something. You probably ain't gonna believe it. Why don't you try me, Judd? I was in love with that girl. I wanted her to marry me. She wouldn't do it. That's why I got so drunk. That's why I got thrown out of that place. Tell me something, Judd. Do you feel that she was pure enough for marriage? She was a good girl. She just never had no decent chance, that's all. I don't mean any offense, Judd. I wasn't good enough for her. Anyway, what difference does it make? I reckon she's gone now. Do you remember hearing about the murder of a dance hall girl in Tucson, Arizona, about a year ago? No. Should I? No. No, no reason why you should. It's just that I... Well, I read a couple of lines in the San Francisco newspaper about it. Well, the girls are getting beaten up and killed sometimes. It's not what you might call an easy trade. Yeah, but this was special. How special? She was strangled and branded with the letter A. the sheriff of Tucson, Arizona. That's right. Saloon girl murdered and branded your town approximately one year ago. Is criminal still at large? Urgently request immediate answer and details of crime. Collect. Care of this office. Signed, Fred Madden, Sheriff. You gonna wait on this? We'll be over the Gold Eagle. Rush it over just the second it comes in, will you, Nate? Yes, sir, Mr. Barkley.
always wondering when you were going to try it, Sergeant. I don't know what the uh, Major is suggesting. The Major is suggesting that the Major would be no harm to the Sergeant when dead, and therefore incapable of contradicting whatever story the Sergeant chose to tell the authorities. Oh, no, sir. I was just trying to keep you out of any further trouble by forcing you to leave. I, 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 I figured if you stayed here much longer... Tucson gal died the same way poor Cora did, Sheriff. And they never caught the man that did it. Let's go, Fred. Major Elliott? Major, I thought I heard him... Aren't you, Mag? I was just coming to get you. Ah! Mag! Now, can they, Meg? I loved you, Meg. I could kill you quickly, you know. But I won't. Because you must be punished. The whole world must know what you are. See what I see? And just what do you think you're doing? Demonstrating the fact I'm no longer an invalid. Well, I may uh, even cook dinner for you tonight. What? He's coming home. Audra, I made it all by myself. I don't believe I it. I did, I did, I did. She certainly did. Well, well, well. All right, you two. What's going on? Well, we just got through talking to the Army. Seems they're very well satisfied with the North 40. Oh? Of course, we, we told them we didn't think so, but we'd let them know. Well, why not? It'd be good for the town and good for us, too, wouldn't it? Atta girl, Audra. Nick, what do you say we take care of that little thing? All righty. Bye, Mother. Audra. I guess they were afraid they'd stir up some bad memories. 
You know, it's strange, Mother. You were so brave and yet so gentle. I wonder what changed him into another man. I don't know, Audra. I don't know. Because there were two men, you know. And they fought a silent battle that no one could see until... until finally they... They both died. 